thank you all for uh, coming to our November webinar. Uh, and uh, our session today is on curriculum development in the age of COVID. And this is part one of a two part series. And uh, we wanna thank Ms. Tandra Burkett for being our presenter for today. And uh, she's gonna be you know, giving us uh, her plethora of knowledge over her years uh, in the DOE. So um, during her, over her 25 year tenure in the New York City Department of Education, Tandra Burkett worked to extend education beyond core academics. Tandra is a curriculum writer, new teacher trainer and youth developer. She was on the curriculum writing team for the New York City Department of Education, Social Studies Division, Tandra created the new teacher program at the AECI <laughs> High School, that's Architecture, Engineering, and Constru Construction Industries, and piloted the first Empowering Boys class in the New York City Department of Education, sponsored by Scholastic Books, Inc., focusing on history and literacy curriculum on the needs of Black and Latino boys. As a lead teacher, Tandra has provided professional development and mentorship in teacher training through the Conflict Resolution Program in the Bronx. Tandra is a certified New York State Conflict Resolution Specialist. As part of this initiative, she created a mediation center in, the, in South Bronx High School, working to reduce gang and school violence. Because of this, Tandra received the New York City Department of Education Bronx Superintendent Leadership Award. In addition, for five years, Tandra has served as a life skills trainer for the Transition to Adulthood Program for Wildcat Service Corporation, a division of FedCap. Tendra is a graduate of New York University and Columbia University Teachers College, National Workshop Presenter, and is currently an education consultant, supporting teachers and students wherever she is needed. She, her educational credo is education is the first form of action. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How I'm so glad to be here this afternoon to do this workshop with you today. Um, I'm ex always excited when it comes to helping teachers um, develop their skills. So I just want to do a couple of things at the beginning. This is an interactive workshop. So you don't, although you don't have to necessarily be on camera, you I would love for you to comment in the chat when I do ask some questions. So I don't want you just to kind of sit there and listen, although you can if you like, but for me, I like engagement. I don't, I hate when it's kind of boring. You know what I mean? I'm not, I was never that boring teacher. I was one of those like, let's be engaged. Let's get excited. Let's do this together. We're going to be here for the next hour. So we want it to be something that we are doing, you know, working through together. So, you know, I'm going to need y'all to, you know, type comments in the chat so it's not just for you to listen. I just want you to be engaged. So I just want to say thank you, everybody, for coming. And we're going to look forward to learning just basically the foundation or how to write a curriculum. So that's what we're going to kind of start off with today on just getting the ideology around it. And then when we come for the next session is when we're going to get in the nuts and the bolts. However, in order for us to be able to write curriculum effectively, you have to really begin to conceptualize what you really want your course to be about. So a lot of people go straight into units and they want to start writing lessons and standards and assessments, and they wonder why the curriculum is not effective. It is because they really didn't take the time to unpack the conceptual framework. Like, what did you want this curriculum to be about? What were your goals? What were you trying to make happen with this curriculum? You got to start there. So we're going to start there now. And um, um, Swan, if, if, if can I share my screen? And is it? Do I have? Okie dokie. All righty, let's make this happen, y'all. Once again, I'm going to be asking you questions, so make sure that you do put it in, you answer in the chat, okay? So I am going to be asking some questions. Let's get it started. Let's get this off the screen. Let's get, oh, let's get this off the screen. All righty. Hold on, hold on. Let me put it on full view slideshow. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Kind of put this in the top so I can see. All right, good. So once again, um, my name is Tangela Burkett, 
and um, educational consultant, curriculum writer, new teacher developer, national lecturer, a little bit of everything during my almost 30 years in the Department of Education. Now I am an educational consultant, graduated from Teachers College Columbia University and New York University, spent most of my time educating young people um, as well as teachers in the New York City area. Um, but I've also done workshop and facilitated um, activities in other parts of the country. I'm glad to be here with BTA this afternoon. So let's get started. Uh, okay, you know how this technology. All right, so we're gonna, this is the workshop outline. Part one, we're gonna be really looking at how does the curriculum, how does the curriculum shape your classroom? And part two is what are the elements of writing curriculum? So we're gonna, once I get part two, we're gonna get into the nuts and bolts. And obviously writing a curriculum is a full semester. So let me be real clear. This is like, you know, speed dating. You know what I'm trying to say? You're not gonna get everything. We're gonna get as much as you can out of what we're gonna be discussing, but really writing a curriculum is a full, you know, semester course. So I'm just gonna try to pull out the nuts and bolts for y'all today, all right? So I'm gonna ask you a quick question and then tell me something about your favorite teacher. Tell me something about your favorite teacher and put it in the chat. Yes, I am asking you to work with me at the very beginning. This is not a sit back and relax one. I want you to put in your chat. Tell me something about your favorite teacher. Please put that in. Gonna give you about, you know, one or two things about your favorite teacher. And I'll make it so I can see. Zoom in, are they are people putting stuff in the chat? Okay, cool. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm, you know, I'm trying to make sure I work through technology. I don't want to make sure that I don't mess this up because I know <laughs> how I am. Make sure I can read all this while we're doing it, you know. Yeah, yeah. All right, so do me yeah. a favor, Suman. Can you tell me some things that people have said in the chat about their okay. favorite teacher? Oh, sure. Okay, well, I wrote. Uh, they, my teacher always told a riddle at the beginning of class. Uh, we have, um, they were very organized and cared about the students. My favorite teacher got to know each student on a personal level and brought the curriculum to life, not boring. Uh, he inspired me to pursue a career in business and really cared about my future. Empathetic toward students, built a relationship with us, expect, had, the teacher had expectations, standards, and cared about me, mm. if, and then differentiated instruction. All right, so let's unpack a little bit. And you might ask me, you know, how does this relate to looking at curriculum writing? Before I go deep into that part, I wanted you to remember the influence that you have as a teacher by remembering what your favorite teacher, how your favorite teacher influenced you. Because sometimes as teachers, we feel like we are undervalued by the system. So I always like to encourage teachers to remember that you are so important and so influential in the life of the child that is sitting in front of you every single day. The same way that your teachers were influencing you. So you, some of you mentioned inspiring. Some of you mentioned that your teachers were caring. Some of you mentioned that they were that they had empathy for, that they were not boring, that they were engaging, that they had differentiating lessons. So I want you to reflect on that because that's how important you are as a teacher, that you are able to have that impact in the life of the child. So that's why what you do and how you're writing the curriculum and the fact that you learning how to write a curriculum is so important. So oftentimes the people who are writing these curriculums are not teachers. They're not in the classroom. They're not doing the frontline work that you're doing. So I was so honored when I was writing the curriculum for the New York City Department of Education for the social studies that they wanted teachers to come because they wanted teachers perspective. So it is great that you're getting the opportunity to get an overview about how you can write the curriculum for your classroom. This is one of my favorite quotes on really the importance of teachers, because like I said, oftentimes we don't get the value that we should. It says the times are literally crying for a new vision in American destiny. The teaching profession, or at least its progressive elements, should eagerly grasp the opportunity which, which fate has placed in their hand. You as the teacher have so much influence and I want you just to keep that in mind as you realize the importance of you writing curriculum. Okay? All right, let's keep it going. All right, so the question is, what is a curriculum? You know, what do we do? We say curriculum, what is, what is that exactly? So we're looking at how we're defining the conceptual framework for your curriculum. So we're asking ourselves, what are the sets of ideas and outcomes 
that will guide the development of your curriculum. Before you begin to write, you have to say, you have to begin to think. You have to begin to uh, explore what are the ideas that you want and then what are the outcomes? What are the ideas that are coming from? When you're sitting down and says, I'm gonna write this technology curriculum, I'm gonna write this social studies curriculum or this business curriculum, what are the ideas that are coming to you and then what are the outcomes? All right, so I'm, once again, I'm gonna ask that you join me in this. It says, how does the curriculum shape your classroom is what we're looking at. And when we're thinking about how the curriculum shapes your classroom, you're asking yourself this question, the curriculum creates the narrative of your course. What story is your class telling? What story do you want this course to tell? And think of it as a narrative. Okay, so like once upon a time, what is it? Because the curriculum is what shapes the story. If you wanna know how the feeling of a class or for a course, if you wanna know the outcomes, what is to be expected, what is the, um, the goals of that course, it really depends upon the curriculum. So think about it as what is the story? What story is your class telling? So what I want you to do right in the chat is what do you want your students to learn in the class that you want to create, whether it's a class that you're creating now or something, even be a fictitious class just for the purpose of this exercise or the class that you are currently teaching. And if you had to rewrite the curriculum, what would it be? How, what do you want your students to learn? That's one. Then the second thing that I want you to look at is how do you want your students to see themselves within the context of your class and how that viewpoint can be projected in light. So how do you, because we want to talk about it in those two ways. What do you want your students to learn, which is the academic, then how do you want your students to see themselves within the context of your class and how can that viewpoint be projected into their life? Because we understand education has a purpose, which is to develop the life skills necessary for our young people to be successful. So it's not just about what happens in the class. It's not just about passing the test, though I do know those things are important. I was a regents guru when I was in my classroom, so I understand that. But beyond that, how can what you are teaching your students affect them and project it into their life. So I'm gonna give you about five minutes to write that. And I would love for some people to actually answer that question verbally. I don't want it to be my voice that we just hear. I will wanna hear your voices as well. So if you're joining, um, you know, put that in the chat. And it gave you about, two, about five minutes. And anybody who would like to answer out loud, we I, I welcome you answering out loud. Once again, what do you want your students to learn? And how do you want your students to see themselves within the context of your class? And how can that viewpoint be projected into their life? So just kind of put that in the chat. One more minute. I just want to get a couple of more responses. All right. 30 seconds. Okay, so let's hear. What do you want your students to learn? Does anybody wanna share out loud before 
I read because I would love to hear anybody. Anybody want to share their their um, their answers? What do you want your students to learn, and how do you want your students to see themselves within the context of your class, and how can that viewpoint be projected in their life? Does anybody feel comfortable enough to come or off mute? No, not no takers. Uh, hello. Yes. yes. Okay. I would. Um, my name is. Um, my name is Miss Edwards, and I would like my students to feel um, confident about you know school in general and how that information can transpire to them being um, lifelong learners. So. Okay. Awesome. Anybody else want to share how, what, how can be confidence and how that can be transferred to them and lifelong learners? Thank you. Someone else? Yes. That I want you to share. Um, um, Miss is Mary. Yes. I see Mary raising her hand. Hi, um, I'm Mary Bonitatibus. I teach business math um, and other business classes, but one of the things I'd like my students to be able to to do is not only apply the skills and knowledge they're learning in my class to their own lives, either post-graduation or while they're working, but to also help their families, um, mm -hmm. maybe educate their parents or their aunts and uncles or siblings on, you know, how to balance their budget, how to monitor their spending and how to, you know, prevent from going into debt or possibly even in the episode of, kind of transfer that knowledge out to their family. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing that because <laughs> when we start to look at what we want our students to learn and how it's both how we see them so the context of your class and in their life, we that becomes the ideology around how we build our curriculum. We have to first identify what you said, Mary, was these are things that I want my students to be able to do walking out of this class. So when I sit down in front of my computer and I begin to write, I'm putting those out there as my ideas. So before we get further along, say, you know what, I want my students to be able to have life skills in the areas of financial literacy. I want them to be able to use this financial literacy so that they are able to become more successful in their finances, that they do not go into debt, that they're able to help their families become debt free and to be more literate. So that means that once we identify what you want to see happening in your class, that becomes part of what you develop in your curriculum. So that's why some persons was that's why it's so important when you sit down to write your curriculum, begin to jot this down begin to ask this question because you want this to be like on your your web you know how what are the things that i want to see happen in my class everybody makes sense everyone if it makes sense to you please put a thumbs up give me some love thumbs up thumbs up somewhere on there thank you so much okay i'm going to share a little bit about what people sh people put in the chat thank you thank you thank you hearts and thumbs up is helpful rose said i would like my students to see there is a big world out there and there are so many opportunities for them as students to explore. Awesome. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, Rose, how do we build that into the curriculum? That whole idea of there's a big world out there. There are so many opportunities for them. How do I make that part of my curriculum? I'm going to jump ahead for two seconds. If I'm using that and I'm writing my curriculum, then I might actually put into my curriculum projects or ideas in experiential learning because I know that I want them to know, learn about the world. So therefore I'm going to have assessments. I'm going to have projects that might be centered around experiential learning because I want my, my students to experience the world outside. I want them to be learn new things beyond what they are used to. So that I'm going to put experiential learning activities. Do we see the connection? Do we see that? When you identify the big picture of what you want, that's how you begin to build out your curriculum. Okay, I'm gonna read a couple more. To see themselves in a passionate career and the impact it will have on them personally and socially. So therefore that also depends upon the, how you transfer that into your curriculum is what activities might you put in your curriculum that deals with building, developing their career, identifying their passion in their career. So that would be an activity. That might be an assessment so that they are able to explore that part of themselves and say, well, how does who you want to be or who you want to grow up to be going to impact your community? Is everybody, are we, are we getting the connection here between first identifying what it is that we want to see our students learn 
in the context of a classroom and their life and how it's being projected. This is when we're just writing our notes. We're not getting into anything yet. We're not looking at standards. We're not looking at rubrics. We're not doing any of that. We're just flushing it all out. This is necessary, okay? Um, Mary already spoke. I'll share what Lisa had to say. I want my students to learn the financial fundamentals needed for them to thrive in the world, world, real world. I want online stimulations to be integrated into my course. So then once again, when we put that out there, we build this into our lessons, activities, and assessments. Okay, make sense? Thumbs up? All right, good. So let's move forward. So creating your curriculum narrative. Many of you have already started to flush that out by sharing just your ideas about what you want your students to learn, what outcomes that you want them to have. But there's two components that I want you to look at when you begin to now go from the big ideas to begin to now narrow them down to transfer it into curriculum. Everybody with me? We're looking at two areas, your hermeneutical lens and theories of learning. And if you need to, please take notes. This also will be on the video, but if you wanna take notes, you're welcome to do so as well so that you can use this when you begin to write in your curriculum and you have your ideas, okay? Now, does anybody wanna read hermeneutical lens? Once again, I said, we're gonna give and take. If you, I don't want you just to feel like you're out there and you know, out by yourself that we are here together. But if anybody wants to read, you are welcome to do so. And, you know, hermeneutical lens. Anybody want to read that for me? Um, I could read it. Awesome. Um, hermeneutical lenses is the social ideology through which the students will view and experience your course. That's really important because every curriculum has a hermeneutical lens. Whether it's evident, you know, or not, it's there. So instead of just kind of starting writing, identify what is the lens what is the social ideology through which your students will view and experience your course? Some of you spoke about um, financial literacy. Some of you spoke about them being able to be, um, some of them be able to help their families, being able to come out of um, economic debt. So your hermeneutical lens might be equity. You might wanna teach your young people about equity. You might wanna teach your young people about equality and finances. So that might be the hermeneutical lens that you are teaching, you're creating your curriculum from. The second thing we're looking at when we do this is theories of learning. What theory of learning? There's so many because we're not gonna obviously get into all of them, but what theory of learning are you going to focus your curriculum on? Can somebody read theories of learning for me, please? Sure, learning theories describes how students receive, process and retain knowledge during learning. Okay, so when you sit down and say, okay, Tandra, I'm gonna write this curriculum. You have to begin to identify what is the hermeneutical lens? What is the social ideology that you want your students to view, what well, students view and experience your course? And then which theory of learning do I wanna focus on? Now you might use more than one. We're gonna look at a couple. There's, there's, there are tons, so there's not gonna be, but we're gonna just focus on some, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna look at is your hermeneutical lens. What is the social ideology? Do you want your students to view your class from the perspective of equity and social class structure? Do you want your class to be viewed from the perspective of diversity of race and gender or inclusivity? Is that the way I want? Is it might be a more feminist? Do I wanna make sure that women's voices are heard in, in, in or equality? Is it more or less Eurocentric, which is the mainstream way that we are studying curriculum today? So the question is, what's the lens? Because some people might say, well, I don't think I want to do anything. I just want to kind of give the information. Understand something. If you leave information out, excuse me. <laughs> if you leave information out or the stories of some group out, then you are, in, in effect, creating a social ideology. So I just want to be that clear. We are telling a story, whether we tell a story where we're implicitly or explicitly but you are telling a story in your curriculum. It is, has a message, whether it's implicit or explicit, there is a message. So you have to say, which hermeneutical lens? And obviously there are more than what I listed here, but these are some general ones. You said, before you start writing, I wanna make sure that my curriculum is inclusive. 
I want to make sure that my curriculum builds around the concepts of equity. And I'm going to include that into it. Decide that at the beginning before you sit down and write, what is the hermeneutical lens? Everybody understand what I'm saying? Did I get a thumbs up? Does that make sense? Any questions on that? Comments? Okay, then the next thing we have to ask ourselves is what is the theories of learning? And these are basic ones, but obviously there are more, but these are basic. One theory we're looking at is behaviorism. Based on the idea that learning and behavior changes are acquired by linking stimuli and response. Reinforce constant feedback that tells them whether what they are doing is right or wrong. This comes in the form of tests, scores, homework, marks, and more. So that's just the debt. And behaviorism is one of the older standards that we've had in theories of learning. Another theory of learning is cognitism. It focuses on the idea that learning is internal and is a result of a student processing information and organizing new information. So cognitive learning essentially relies on five principles, remembering, understanding, applying, and evaluating. So you said, you know, is that the theory of learning I want to use? The other one is constructivism. Constructivism is based on the premise that we construct learning new ideas based on our prior knowledge and experience, experiential learning or project-based. Now, obviously, you can have a blend of these theories of learning because we do different of these things in our class, but some of them are really focused on a particular type of theory of learning. So for example, I'm a big person on project-based learning or experiential. So my theory of learning that I would use a lot in my classroom would be constructivism. I'm not really, really big on tests as you know, and homework. I will tell you, I hated homework when I was a kid and I hated giving out homework. So what, it wasn't just about that. I really wanted my students to be engaged in the process of a project development if I could and experiential learning to me that was so my main theory of learning was constructivism obviously I gave tests but in terms of what theory I was using to develop my classroom it would have been predominantly constructivism okay so let me hear something from you what hermeneutical lens do you think and it doesn't have to be this list but it can be something that else that you might have do you think you want to create your curriculum from let me hear from you what are some what are some hermeneutical lens that you want to create your curriculum from? You can put it in the chat or you can feel free just to say it out loud. Um, is empowerment a lens? Like so let's it, it, yes, empowerment can, empowerment to do what? Finish the end of that sentence. Okay, empowerment to make uh, like decision making. Like, okay, so you want to make sure that your students have your have the skills to be able to make healthy decisions. Yes. So that means that your lens might be critical thinking, mm -hmm. and that you have created. And if your lens is critical thinking, then that means that what you create in terms of your activities and assessments will be connected to those that would facilitate critical thinking. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, so let's hear some more. If you want, you'll feel free to put it in the chat or say it out loud. What is the hermeneutical lens that you want to teach? Now, before we get to theory of learning, we have to first identify the lens and, and it'll make sense in a minute. We have uh, in, in the chat, we have a comment from Rose. Yes. About uh, she does a lot of experiential learning as much as possible with real world examples also project-based. Awesome, so Rose, that would be um, more of constructivism in your theory of learning. But Rose, what is the lens though? Because you want to have both. You want to, because the lens will definitely, if it's only one side of your curriculum, the theory of learning is the other side. So you want to identify what is the narrative that you are telling your course from. If you're creating these projects, what is it based upon? What is that, what is the social ideology that you're using to base it on? And sometimes it's very deliberate because sometimes we don't think about that part. We think about the other part, which is the theory of learning, but we really don't pay attention to we write in our curriculum. What is the hermeneutical lens that we are using that the young, some people see themselves through what it is that you are developing? Because the curriculum tells a story. Okay, 
The lens is Eurocentric. I teach business. I use textbooks and apply my 20 years plus of real world. Awesome. So that's where you're looking at it in terms of the mainstream and that's the area and you're using the textbook. Okay. So that's your hermeneutical lens and your theory of learning. Okay. Your theory of learning based upon what you shared will probably be more, um, let me move this over. It would be more cognitive. Okay. And you said you're also important incorporating more hands-on and that's where constructivism comes in. Because like I said, it's not just singular, you can combine, but you may have a focus. It's important to identify these things before you start writing. Ask yourself, what theory of learning am I based in my curriculum on? What lens am I going to use? Do you have any more? I would love to hear more because if we don't get this part done, then you're going to have a, your curriculum will not be cohesive. It will be a lot of stuff. And if you notice, you have a, you, as teachers, we know we get curriculums like, all right, I got this curriculum. And I don't really know, it's not effective. There's reasons why curriculums are not effective because they did not spend the time to really unpack the narrative or develop the narrative of what they want the students to know. Yes, Mary. culture fit in there? Culture? I didn't hear what you said, I'm sorry. Would, where would culture fall? In well, training, all cultures are, you know, um, present or, you know, part of the discussion. That's also and in ESL, we have to make sure that we include, you know, that we're when we're teaching in the, with ESL students that we're using information from their cultures to, you know, help them learn. So, like, where would that fall under diversity or equality? It, it, it can fall under diversity. It can it can also be diversity or inclusion. You want to make sure that your curriculum is inclusive of all cultures. That's the lens because that mm -hmm. will directly determine we're going to get to next what type of resources and text you use that's why you have to determine your hermeneutical lens because that that's what will that's what will inform that part we're going to look at that and anybody else want to share their hermeneutical lens or their theory of learning because that was a really good question um commonly shared mary it would be diversity or it will be inclusivity in terms or multiculturalism so you, those are different things. Like I said, this is just some baseline. There are, it def, definitely goes beyond this lens that I shared. And even something that you develop on your own. You may say, you know what? I want to create a lens that we'll put some things together that I want to see happen in my class. It can definitely, your hermeneutical lens can all definitely be organic. It does not have to be something that is already a standard in society. It can definitely be organic. That's how these, that's how they actually develop because somebody had an idea, you know, and they put a, a definition to it. You, feel, you are free to do that. Any other questions on this part? All right, we good? Thumbs up, we good? Make sense? All right, let's continue. All right. So how does theory turn into practice? You see this big hermeneutical lens, what does that mean? Your hermeneutical lens or your social ideology informs your resources and texts that you use in your class. If you feel like my lens is equity, that means that when you're doing a document, when they're doing a reading assignment, when you're finding an article for the students to, to, for the sorry, for students to read, you're going to choose those whose themes is around equity. See, sometimes we wonder, like, where to get these resources from? How are these resources connected? Your lens determines your resources and text. So as Mary said, I want my class to be multicultural or inclusive. That means that when you develop and you use texts that you find for your class, you're going to find those texts that are based around sharing the experiences of all cultures. So let's say, for example, uh, and that if I'm not going to go ahead, I want to do educational theory next. Everybody understand? So when you determine your human lens, when it becomes the resource portion of your curriculum, you're looking for resources, reading materials, textbooks, documents, articles, videos, images that reflect the lens that you want your students to view the class. So if you want to say my lens is multicultural, that means when I choose pictures or illustrations in my class, then I'm going to choose pictures and illustrations that represent multiculturalism. If I feel that I want to enhance the role of women in business, and that's the class that I'm developing, like women in business, then I'm going to get texts and articles and videos 
that highlight women in business. That's why it's important to first identify what's your lens. When you identify your lens, then you can identify your resources. Check, check. Okay, makes sense. Good. All right. The second part is your educational theory and its um, uh, methods of assessment. That, excuse me, educational theory informs your activities and methods of assessment. So, for example, if my educational theory is constructivism, then my method of assessment would be probably product based learning. So, look at the example on the bottom. Hermeneutical lens is inclusion, which was something that Mary mentioned. So, that means my resources maybe documents about, if, so I'm gonna roll back up a sentence. My course is a technology course on innovations and inventions. So let's say that I'm developing a technology course on innovations and inventions. That's, the, that's what I wanna create. My hermeneutical lens, the social ideology that I'm using is inclusion. I want my class to be inclusive, to be diverse. My resources, documents about inventions created by people of various cultures. So that's where the hermeneutical lens helps to focus when one of the hardest parts of writing your, your curriculum is what resources do I choose, right? Where do I get the resources from? It's because there's so much information out there. When you identify your lens, you can then say, I know what information I'm going to look for because it's focused around the lens that I want my students to view my class. Educational theory. Once you determine your educational theory, in this case, it was constructivism. Those are the assessments that I want to use. So when I determine that the assessment method that I want to use in the class is education is constructivism, that when I write my curriculum, I know that after every unit, I might create a project. So I know this is a project-based class because every time a unit, project, unit, project, unit, project, unit, project, and at the end, they will have a big project. That's why it's important to identify what is your lens first and your educational theory. It will make things, it will make your curriculum cohesive because it will be consistent with what you want your students to learn and the outcomes from this course. I'm gonna stop here just to hear any feedback, anything that's in the chat. I just wanna make sure that we are all on the same page. Anybody wanna share their opinion? That's actually, yeah, hi, this is Lisa Tandra. Um, that's where I'm struggling right now. Um, I'm a new teacher. Um, I teach business. So I teach three sections of personal finance, entrepreneurship, and a keyboarding class. Um, keyboarding is pretty, you know, cut and dry. I'm just looking for ways to make it fun. But the personal finance, there are so many resources out there that I print everything. And then I look at it all and I'm like, well, where, how do I get, how do I fit this all in? So I think that if I do this theory that you're presenting to us, I think this might really help me to streamline things. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Lisa. I know that it's helpful because like you said, there's so much information out here. I mean, you will be, look, but once you identify first, like we did at the beginning, what, have you, what is the story you want your class to sell? So in person, um, uh, uh, tell, when you're looking at personal finance, even in that, what do you want? As Mary mentioned before, or someone mentioned, I believe it was, uh, um, what do you want your students to learn from your personal finance? If the story you want your students to tell is, and you want your class to tell, excuse me, is that I want my students to learn how to be financial literate so that they will be debt free. Or I want them to be able to learn how to, to begin to develop intergenerational transfer of wealth instead of intergenerational transfer of debt. That is an ideology because I wanna teach my young people how to be literate enough so that they learn how to be able to pass down wealth to the next generation. That is how you will find articles, you will find videos and you will find activities based upon these two things. So sometimes you just get a scratch pad, write down and say, you know what, what is it that I really wanna get out of this course? Using this, using what I've just shared, it will direct your research and your development in a much more cohesive manner. Anybody else want to share a comment? Tell me how is this Thank working? You. Does this make sense? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Anybody else? We good? All right. We're going to keep on going. So I want to get you out, uh, out on time. So the question is, what hermeneutical lens and educational theory would you like to develop your curriculum? It can be more than one. I want you to begin to consider that because 
you will have to use this when I see y'all next time because we're going to start putting it into action. We're going to actually start doing that because we, and, and it may be like Lisa mentioned, an existing course that you have that you want to develop or it might be something that you want to create something new. Let's say you want to create a women in business class and you want to create this women in business class and you want to sell it to your, uh, your uh, administration and says, we need to have a class about women in business. When you develop this, a cohesive curriculum, you have a better chance of getting your administration to add this class into the list of classes because you created, you, you have developed something that they can actually see from soup to nuts that is substantive. So that's another thing. So if you want to develop a new course, this is how it is. So think about those, think about the course that you want to teach or the course that you're teaching that you want to write your curriculum around. So please put in the chat, what course do you want to write so that I have an idea or what course do you want to enhance? Please put that in the chat now so that we can kind of see where, where, where do you want, how do you want to use this information? I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. So in the chat, just please put what class that you want, what course that you want to develop. I see Rose, I'm gonna, we'll come back to you. Rose said an entrepreneurship class, work-based learning class. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Yes, she said, she said, I know the struggle. <laughs> yes. Personal finance. Awesome. Oh, that's interesting. Navigation, but then the outdoors correlate into, into light. Can you explain that a little more? Um, oh. That's very interesting. Can you just, I just want to, I'm just curious to hear more about this. Oh, sure. Like, cause you know, um, cause I was thinking about what you said about the hermeneutical, hermeneutical lens. And uh, I think uh, especially a lot of people, uh, depending on the environment you live in, you know, some people are like, oh, I live in that. I'm an outdoorsy person. I'm an urban person. I'm a city person. I'm an outdoor person. And the skills you need for the outdoors like, you know, a lot of people think, oh, what's that? You know, I'm in the woods. Like, why do I need the, the you know, compass and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, <laughs> if you learn how to use those things, you're learning a couple of things. You're learning how to have self-confidence, mm -hmm. technical skill, mm -hmm. you know, how to get around. In <laughs> but also you can use all of those things to make life decisions too. You can become more confident to make a decision. I'm going to go in this direction because I know where my compass leads me. Oh, that's I'm, awesome. I'm, I love yeah, that. I'm correlating a, those kind of things. Yeah. Excellent. So it's so it's just literally dealing with the biggest outdoors based class and teaching them how to have those life skills to be able to manage. Yes. Um, and that's and, 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 and even in a class that's um, very tangible, such as that, mm -hmm. these ideology around a hermeneutical lens and your um, theory of learning becomes necessary. And really, because like I said, it's so much that you can be able to teach when you identify what it is that you want to students to understand. Even with mm -hmm. that, let's say that you want your hermeneutical lens for your class might be um, cooperation. Mm -hmm. I want to teach my students how they have they might have to work together to survive. Yeah, and I want them to be able to learn these tools. So therefore, my activities and what I do will be a, about cooperation, learning how to develop as a team learning how to be able to, so that, that means the products that, that you would give them or the activities you would give them will be all about, you need your partner to able to do this in order to, you know, get whatever goal that you might have, whatever, whatever it is that you, they have to be able to learn how to do in the outdoors. Once you understand that my lens is cooperation mm -hmm. and cooperative working together, 
team building, then it makes it easier to identify what you want to actually include in the curriculum. Does that make that you follow me? That's yes. that's why this is helpful because it can literally mm -hmm. cut through all of the noise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These two things will cut through all of the noise of such an inundation of information that we get as teachers. You can be able to say, I know what I'm looking for now. I'm looking for, so even if you're researching activities, you know what kind of activities you're recent searching for because you've already identified what it is you want your students to be able to understand about themselves, the world, and the information that you want them to have. Somebody else mentioned that they have an entrepreneurship class. And I did entrepreneurship class as well. And it is challenging, it's very broad. This helps it to narrow down. Because entrepreneurship, once again, you can say, I want to teach entrepreneurship from the perspective of equity. You know, I wanted to make sure be clear so that all people can be involved in how they should develop their, their, their plan in business. What does that mean? Identifying, how do you want them to do that? Once again, if we continue to use an example of um, projects, you might say every unit, I want them to do the project or I want them to be able to write the paper around it. Once you identify your theory of learning, it's less challenging because you're not trying to sift through all of the information. You're only sifting through the information that that directly relates to your theory of learning and your hermeneutical lens. You cut everything out. So it's a lot faster. I'm going to go through the chat. Problem solving. Um, all right, problem solving your little how to find your way once again. That's going to help in terms of creating those problem solving activities in your daily lesson your weekly lesson, when you develop your unit, this is where we're going with this. So that's why I wanna make sure that everybody has this before we move forward of identifying what class, okay? So we're pulling ourselves to the end of this section. And I guess I was really, I'm good on time. Yes, I wanna make sure that I got y'all out at five o'clock because you know, as teachers, <laughs> it was a long day for y'all. I remember when I was in the classroom, so I wanna respect your time. So we are right on time. So summary of part one. Um, can somebody read the first part, the first the first bullet, please? I can. The curriculum shapes the outcome of your course. So that's the first thing that we have to remember. Now begin to look at curriculums maybe differently. It shapes the outcome. Whether or not your curriculum, your class will be, will have the success that you wanted to have will depend upon the curriculum that you develop or that you might augment because you might already have a curriculum but you say you know what i'm gonna tweak this because i want to have a different outcome for my students let's look at the second bullet can somebody please read the second bullet for me to write a curriculum you must first determine the narrative that the course will be based upon so what is the story that you want your class to tell what is the story that you want your course to tell so ask yourself that question. What is the story? What's the narrative? Because that narrative will directly relate to the wider picture. So what is the story? I want, what do I want my students to know and understand? Let's look at the last bullet, please. Can somebody read the last bullet? The hermeneutical lens in educational theory you select is the cornerstone of your curriculum. These elements inform the unit plan, resources selected and assess, resources selected and assessment to be implemented. Thank you so much, Mary. So when we decide the hermeneutical lens and the educational theory, that gives us a roadmap to unit plans, resources, assessments, and it makes it a lot easier for us to be able to get through writing this curriculum. So, what I want you, this is your homework. Everybody, you know, we're in class, we have homework. So when I see y'all next time, identify the course, which we did a little bit already, the lens and the theory that you would like to use to write your curriculum. What's the course lens theory that you would like to use to write your curriculum? Because when I see you again, I want you to already have that because when we want to go into the nuts and bolts of writing it, it will be, as we already come to this conclusion, it's a lot easier if we have that done the course you want to write, the lens you want, the theory you would like to use to write your curriculum. Got it? All right. So before we go out, I just want to hear from you. Takeaways, comments, or questions. That just helps to inform what this workshop was for you. What are your takeaways? Anybody have a comment or a question? And then we will be done for today. 
thought it was very helpful. <laughs> Thank you very much. How was it helpful for you? Well, it just helps giving me some structure. I think it's so hard to, when you're trying to wrap your arms around curriculum development, you you know, you're all over the place. So I like this, I like having a lens. I like having this structure that at least gives me something to work with uh, to narrow kind of the field. So yes, I, I love to hear those kinds of answers, those kind of comments. Anybody else, what was your takeaway? Somebody tell me, now that I've got from this, this, this workshop, what am I taking, which, which, what are you taking away from this that you think that is helpful for you in, in your pedagogy? Something that keeps going through my mind. I've written curriculum a few times and apparently not very well because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't do some of these things, but I always find that the district's expectations of the time it's going to take you to write a thorough and comprehensive curriculum is so inadequate and they just like everything else with teachers um, they inherently it, inherently it's necessary for you to add a lot more time than you're paid for so i feel like this will kind of streamline the process maybe and um uh, when you're saying this stuff it's kind of making me think project-based learning like when we do black history month for example when i do business a business lesson for black history month that co collaborates with everybody all the other subjects mm -hmm. like i'm focusing on you know minority and women-owned business i'm focusing on you know black entrepreneurs and so like i everything i'm doing is related to black history month so it's kind of like what this sounds like finding that lens what are you trying to achieve from it and then how, what are the outcomes you're looking for and if you kind of know those things in will maybe make it more an a more efficient process. Yes, definitely. That's what I mean for me in writing curriculum, this was the most helpful thing that I learned. And then when I share people hot like in workshops such as this, this really cuts, like I said earlier, cuts through the noise and it will definitely um give give you more time. I mean it gives you that the time is is you know saver and getting through it because you're not, you know, like, oh my gosh, because it's one, like I said, one of the hardest parts is identifying what research, what resources you want to use. And you, it's so much. So this helps you to attach those resources that are specifically connected to the theory of learning that you want to have and the content that directly connects to your lens that you want to teach. And that's what helps. Okay, any questions before we go? Because I know this was a, this was a quick workshop, but I wanted it, to, I am teacher friendly. So that's why I wanted to be clear. I wanted it to be quick because I know the teachers got a lot on their plate and I wanted it to be something that you can implement immediately. The cool thing about this is you can do this right now. You can look back at you, because this is also going to be applied to a specific lesson that you're getting ready to teach as well. So it can be applied to a broader curriculum. We can definitely, you can look at something that you're going to do this week and say, you know what? I can rework this lesson because I can use the lens. What lens do I want the students to get? What theory of learning do I want? So it's also very specific on lessons, not just for curriculum, but it is most effective when we look at the broader scope of curriculum. Because I'm 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 big on teacher friendly because there's too much stuff, take too much time, and you really can't implement it. It's like why, you know? So I'm and I, like I said as well, I hate boring long stuff. So I hopefully this was engaging and interactive. Mary, you have a question? I do. Um, so. Just to clarify, are you saying only choose one hermeneutical lens? Like, no, you could choose more than one. That obviously would complicate things, all right? I mean. Well, you know, not necessarily because you can create, a, I just use one word, but you can create your hermeneutical lens to be a sentence or two about what you want your course. So like, we're gonna look at, so when I write the course, remember you create a course summary. Your course summary can be, I would like this business and technology course to be able to help my students to navigate through the world, understanding how it can be effective for equity and inclusivity and da 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 da. So I can I can include. That's when you get you know into when you're writing out your summary. You can definitely choose more than one lens, and some lens actually speak to each other. So it doesn't have to be. Obviously, it's going to be more that you're developing. You know, you know, if you choose more than one lens, then that's more work in terms of that way but there's nothing wrong with it because many of those lenses definitely do speak to one another so you can choose more than one because i have def i've chosen more than one many occasions same thing with the theory of learning i've not only stuck to one you have elements of them 
Sometimes you have a focus, but you also then might have elements included from other parts of your theories of learning. Any other questions, comments before we close out? Because we are here on time. Anything else? All righty. Okay. Um, okay. I wanted to just say thank you so much, Tandra, for this uh, very informative awesome dope hype workshop, uh, part one of two. And uh, for those of you who are BTA members, uh, this will be available on the, on the website in, uh, in a couple of days. And those of you who uh, haven't joined BTA yet, uh, please join us. We do very hype PDs, obviously. So please join us um, and uh, stay tuned for the next one. I'll be putting out an email for the second date, uh, for this part two date and yeah. Have a great rest of the evening. Thank you, everyone.